Hello students, welcome back. I hope all of you are safe and fine. Today we are going to continue with our lesson. In the last video, we have studied about the digestive system. Today we are going to learn about the excretory system. In order to understand the excretory system, you have to first know what is excretion. Excretion is the removal of waste from the body. Removal of waste from the body. that carry out excretion. The organs are the lungs, the skin and the kidneys. Now, the lungs. Lungs give out carbon dioxide. What do they give out? Carbon dioxide. What about the skin? The skin has sweat glands that give out sweat. What about the kidneys? The kidneys remove the liquid waste from our body in the form of urine. Now, it is the urinary system which is the main excretory system that we are going to study about. So today we are going to study about the The urinary system, that is, I have a picture here. This is the excretory system that we are going to study about today. Now, the urinary system is made up of first the kidneys. Now, what are the kidneys? The kidneys are a pair of bean shaped organs. Can you see the shape? It looks like a bean. It consists of a pair of bean shaped organs. Now what is the function of the kidneys? The function of the kidneys is to filter blood. The function is filter blood and pass the waste out. What is the waste? Urine. Through the ureters. The kidneys filter the blood and the waste which is urine is passed through the ureters. Now, what are these ureters? They are muscular tubes. That connect, what do they do? They connect the kidney to the urinary bladder. Connect the kidney to the urinary 
Lalo. Now, what is the length of these tubes? They are 25 to 30 centimeters long in an adult. Next is the urinary bladder. is a urinary bladder. It is a hollow muscular elastic organ. What does it do? It collects urine till it is thrown out of the body. What is the function? Is collect urine from the kidneys. It collects urine from the kidneys and keeps it till it is thrown out of the body through the urine tract. Now what is the capacity of the urinary bladder? How much of urine can it hold? It can hold 400 to 600 ml of urine. Now, when the during urination, when you want to pass urine, what happens is the bladder contracts till the bladder contracts and the urine flows out of the body through the urinary tract. What is this? This is the passage through which urine flows out of the body. The bladder contracts and the urine flows out through the urethra. It is a passage through which urine flows out of the body. Now, the urethra is smaller in females compared to males. It is smaller in females compared to males. Now, a recap once again. The urinary system consists of a pair of kidneys which are bean shaped. The function is they filter of blood and pass the waste in the form of urine through the ureter. There are two ureters. Now, these ureters are muscular tubes that carry urine from the kidneys to the bladder. They are 25 to 30 centimeters long. The bladder is an elastic hollow muscular organ that collects urine from the kidneys. The capacity of the bladder is 400 to 600 ml and can hold that much of urine. The bladder contracts when the urine flows out of the body through a duct or a passage called the urethra. Urethra, the urethra is small in the case of females as compared to males. Now, we have to study the importance of water 
for the proper functioning of the digestive system and the excretory system. You already know that three-fourth of our body weight is water. Now why is water important? Water helps in the absorption of nutrients. Water helps in preventing constipation. What is constipation? Constipation is not being able to pass a, not being able to have a bowel movement every day. So water is very important. Water also is required to flush the toxins, the waste out from your body in the form of urine. If you don't drink enough of water, you are not going to pass out urine. So when you don't pass urine, the toxins remain in the body. Then water also regulates the temperature of our body. So how much of water must we drink? We must drink 8 to 10 glasses of water every day. It can be in the form of juice as well, in the form of tea, milk or uh, uh, food that is that contains water like cucumber. Understood? Now open your textbooks to page number 36. We have some healthy habits that we must follow. I'm sure all of you are already following most of them. Page number 36. Healthy habits for digestion and excretion. Let's take the first one. Wash your hands before and after all meals. You are already doing this. You already, you all of you run to the washroom to, uh, to wash your hands before the lunch break, which is a good habit. Next, eat meals at fixed time every day. Our meals are breakfast, lunch, dinner, must always be at the fixed time. It shouldn't be breakfast at 10 o'clock, lunch at 3 o'clock or dinner at 12 o'clock. No, it has to always be at the right time. Chew the food properly. The food we eat has to be chewed well. Food that is chewed well is easier to digest. Eat a balanced diet that contains all the nutrients in adequate quantities. You already know this. We have to eat all kinds of food for the, uh, because our body requires all the nutrients. Next, do not talk while eating. Very important. When you talk while eating, you are not able to chew your food well. Food can fall out of your mouth, which is bad. Do not overeat. You should not overeat. Not eat more than what is required for our body. If we overeat, we put on too much weight, which again is not healthy. Do not drink water during a meal. Drink water a few minutes after the meal. You can drink water after half an hour. Why? Because if you drink water during your meal, it dilutes the digestive juices. Next, rinse your mouth after eating anything. Why must we rinse our mouth? If food remains in our mouth, we can get teeth. Our teeth can decay. Do not play or sleep immediately after eating. Why must we not run, play or sleep after eating? Now what happens is in order to facilitate digestion, the blood flow is more towards the stomach and the digestive organs, which means that our legs, our uh, hands, which are required for playing, for running, get less blood. Do not, uh, sorry, eat lots of fruits and vegetables to add roughage in the food. You already know the importance of roughage. Roughage helps to push the solid waste out of the body. Avoid junk food and fatty food. We have already studied this in the first lesson. What does junk food and fatty food do? It makes you obese. The last one, eat fresh and well cooked food. Stale food can make you fall sick. We must eat food that is fresh food that is cooked well so that we do 
not fall sick. Children, read the lesson. I hope you have understood both the systems where the digestive system and the excretory system.